morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Open your Bibles to John chapter 18. everybody this morning. I'm going to hopefully finish what I started a couple weeks ago. If we can. Let me get as far a couple weeks ago. The one and two, but we got so far. But I stopped. But anyway, as I look back, I was in John 13 a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, and, and this is the last verse that I read. In John 13, 38. So Jesus answered him, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? It says, very verily, I said unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. And now we're going to jump to John chapter 18. And move right along, hopefully, with this. Talking about Peter. As we look at chapter 18 of John. Talk about where Jesus completed his mission. He's being betrayed and getting arrested in the garden, getting ready to be, to be crucified, getting put on the cross. And, and there is with him a man. Look at verse 10 of John chapter 18. And Simon Peter's with him and the, and the, the army's there. They're there to get him. In verse 10 it says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name, name was, was Malice. It says, Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the, the, the sheep. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? So let, let us pray. Most gracious, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be here. Well, we thank you for every note played, every song sung so far, and every prayer prayed. And right now, we just pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you'd move me out of the way. you speak to us while we need, so we'll leave your bed and while we came in, and hopefully our faith will be built up even stronger. We thank you so much for the praise that's went on and the prayer that's been going on this week till, till we get to come together today. And Lord, we just thank you so much for that. Thank you again for everyone here and their purpose for being here when you have a word for them all. We just pray you'll just speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we, as we see this, we see that Simon Peter was with Christ when they come to get him, and he drew his sword and he cut off the man's ear. And then we see in verse, verse 12, it says, Then the band of the, uh, and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away across bound him and said to let him away to, to Ananias first, for he was, was father-in-law of Cyphus, which was the high priest the same year, and Cyphus <laughs> practiced all week, and you get it wrong when you preach, right? Because he, Cyphus, which, he, which was he, which gave counsel to the Jews that was, was expedient, that one man should die for the people. Now, verse 50 through 17 is key. I want to look at it right quick. It says, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. In 16, it says, but Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that door, other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her, and kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. As we look here that in our life, we see that we're sort of talking about Peter, and the verse that I read in chapter 13, to go, go back to that just a little bit, is we're going to have to go back. He said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. That's what Peter was told. Christ told him, that's what you're going to do. And now in chapter 18, we see that he was with Christ in the garden while Christ was praying. Before he's going to get crucified, they come to get him. He cut off the man's ear. Life is easy when we're standing with God and we have the... Let me rephrase. We are stronger when we stand with other people who are Christians with us. Yes. It's easier for us. 
It's easier for us to stay. Yeah, I'm in. I went to church today. Yes, I went, and there's people praying for us. It makes it a lot easier for us, right? Yeah. Because in chapter 13, as we, as we talked two weeks ago, is that we see that he said, I will die for you. And then he went back to, to Luke. I think it said that I will go to prison and to death for you. That's what Peter told Christ. But then Christ at the end of the verse I read, he said, you're going to die, deny me three times before the cock crows." How do we do that when we're standing with people that are other Christians? It, it, it's easy because we have strength in numbers sometimes, right? It's easy to be a Christian in here today. It's easy to have a little bit more faith today because look where we're at. There's people praying for us. There's people... There's this people that they are here with seeking the same thing that we are, a Savior. We need help. Everybody in this place, we all need help today. That's why we're here. Yes, there's one man that can do it, and that's Jesus Christ who came, and he saved me. He's the one that died on the cross for all of my sins. He's the one that took all the, all the pain and all the things for, for, my, for my healing. And, 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 and oh gosh, stay focused, Ray. But we see here that Simon Peter... He went on down, and, and so, so, so they, they took Jesus there to all this stuff. Now, Simon Peter was there, but a damsel saw him as he was going in, and now he's alone. And what's the first thing that he does? She has seen him. I, aren't you one? Aren't you one of those? <clears throat> Are you one of those people? Huh? How many of you ever heard that? How many of you that? You're one of those, aren't you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One of those what? You know, you know. I was, just this week, I had somebody tell me, why, why are you making this about religion? I said, what are you talking about? They said, about saying you're a Christian. So that's what I do. I'm here for that. I'm trying to make disciples. I'm trying to make other Christians. I'm trying to help the people know they need to be Christian. Don't know what else you wanted here, but that's what I'm here for. I am here to help. <laughs> Glory. You know what? I don't think they wanted anything that I had. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm just here to help them any way they want to. If they don't want anything, there ain't nothing I can do about it, right? Why? I'm there alone, right? I'm outnumbered. I either deny him and say, okay, yeah, I'll go along with you, or I'm going to say, no, I know who put me here. I know who gave me the strength to be here today and stand firm with what I have to try to believe. What, what, again, what I try to believe, why? Because I know that there's times in my life I have doubted. I say, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this thing. But I need you to help me, right? So what do we do? The first thing that we do, yeah, we get around and we get by ourselves. She said, this is what it says. So then said the damned who kept the door, art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He was a disciple of Christ, and he denied him. He's already denied him once. Now, if you go on through 18 through 24, this is where Christ is, is in front. He, and going over in verse 22. Now they're asking him questions there through 21 there. In 22 it says, and, and this was, it says, and when he had thus spoken, Christ had just spoken, this is one of the officers which stood, struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer thou the highest priest. So he's being struck, he's been hit. All these questions are coming at him. Christ is answering them, and Peter's over here denying him. It's already not even once. Now, 25 through 27. We want to look at this. And hopefully I get somewhere else. It says that Simon Peter stood and, war and warmed himself. It's outside there. It says, they, they said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it. He said, I am not. There's number two. Now, again, this is a, a, a disciple. 26, it says, one of the servants of the high priest being his kin kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off. Wait, did I just tell you about that one? Yes. That's right there in number 10 there. So this is the relative of the, of the person that he cut the ear off. Said, did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately caught proof. We see here that Peter, I'm going to hopefully get to where he spoke three times. This is three times here he spoke by the nine Christ, by the nine being the disciple, by the nine that he even walked with. 
How many times have we denied him or so? What's so great is, is that we're going to find out that it doesn't matter how many times he still loves us, he's still going to come to us. But we all, I believe, in this place have one way, shape, or form. We may not know it sometimes, but sometimes we do. We have denied it. When opportunity comes for us to do what we can do, and we don't do it, we, we're denying Christ because God just gave me the opportunity to do this, but I let it go. How many done something you say, well, I'll let the next person take care of that? What if God needed us to do that? What if God needed us to stand and say, you know what? <laughs> Why are you making about religion? Why do you say this Christian thing? I got two choices. Deny him or not deny him. So what I do, basically I step back. Don't need no confrontation. Because I just spoke about, about loving people, right? When people talk about me being a Christian, you want to fight. But you got to fight with love. Amen. you got to fight with love. I just step back and just said, man, this is why I'm here. Help you in any way, man. But I had to step back after I told him, this is what I do. This is why I'm here. It was so hard. But God loves that person. Those people that was there that, that, that made it. So what do we say? It's about a relationship. See, people believe in a lot of things. But I believe also that we have denied Christ. I believe we have denied who we are or who we're supposed to be. We don't want, we don't want people to see. I used to think about it as a kid, and I'll be honest with you, that if I do this, then it's going to be a higher expectation for me. You ever, ever thought of that? Yes. They're going to think I'm going to have to behave more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're already wrong, you do wrong, you think, well, man, they're going to expect that. That's why I was one, that's one reason I was afraid. Why are they going to think of me? Then I think, well, you know what? If I, if I do this, then, then I'm going to, then I, then I might mess up. And they're going to say, well, hey, he's not perfect. Well, he really, he's really not a Christian. And you're going to hear that anyway. But guess what? That's another fear. But one of the things that I found out through that is, is that when I did mess up and I had the night, and guess what? He still loved me. Amen. <laughs> He still goes where we are in that mess that we're in and all that muck and all that stuff that's around there and he still comes to us. See, Peter denied him three times and the cock crew. Can you imagine that? That nobody else is going to hear that, that cock crew but him. Think about that. What if he's the only one to hear that heard that thing? Because he did what Christ told him he was going to do. See, you're going to deny me three times then it's going to crawl. Let me tell you something. When that happens, you know what? That would be the loudest alarm you ever hear in your life, right? Yes. I know people in my house that have alarm go off as loud as they can, two feet from them, and they still don't move. I can hear it outside. And they're like, they're still sleeping? I'm like, how do you do it? I don't understand it, right? But this can be, be something you have not, you have all that going on, but he's standing there and he denied him that third time and that cock crows. I said that was louder than anything that he ever heard in his life. Amen. And God, that's the way that we are. When we mess up and we sin, guess what we do? We feel the Holy Spirit come upon us. Right. We feel that when I have done wrong, I don't know how to change this man. So what do we do? We just dig deeper in it to try to forget what we just messed up with, right? That's what happens to us. We're just making ourselves, we're digging, we're digging, and we're digging because we don't know what to do. And all the time he's sitting there saying, man, I'm here. I'm going to come. I'll be here. Just, 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 just look up. There, there is life after this. So look at John chapter 8, uh, 21. John chapter 21. And this is, John chapter 21, it's in verse 1. We're going to start reading there. It says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Now, we just seen Peter was there the night before he went to the cross. Now, this is after he's resurrected and he's coming back up. He's been showing himself to, to them already, but he's showing himself to them again. And then, this is their work together. Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan, the Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. They were all together after this. Now, right? Now, verse 3. To Simon Peter said to them, I go fishing. <laughs> all right. <sighs> now he's going fishing. 
He denied him in 18, right? No, it's not over. We're going to have some good stuff come up, all right? He denied him, and now he's going, and, and Christ has already showed himself a couple times to him, and now they're, he's going to show himself again, but right now, he said, I'm going to go fishing. Other disciples went with him fishing. Now, let's go on down. He said, I'm going to go fishing. He says, they said to him, we also go, go with thee. How many is ready to go fishing? Somebody in here has a boat. How many like to go on a boat with them? We would, wouldn't we? We're not going to worry about what to do sometimes. We can go. We're going to go with them, man. How? Right? <laughs> yeah, we have a whole lot. More the merrier. How many of you ever heard that, right? Yes. That's what we do. The more the merrier, man. <laughs> and that's the way that we, that, 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 that we have been. So, you know, they're going fishing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing where they're going. This is what they're doing. It says, they went forth and entered to the ship immediately, and, and that night they called nothing. Guys, we're getting ready to go back to... This is looking like Luke chapter 5. Remember Luke chapter 5? It said, launch out to the deep. They went, they called nothing, but Christ come, and they called, boom, a big boat load, whatever boat was getting to, to sink. So, now, this is basically going to be the same thing. We see that they go out, they call nothing. Now, it says, verse 4, it says, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. They don't know what's going on yet, but Jesus is already there. All right, let me tell you something. We can go fishing all we want. But if God needs our attention, He's going to come where we are. That's right. Right? How many likes that? Yes. Well, how many thinks He's been too nosy? I want to fish. He said, I'll let you fish all night, and you got absolutely nothing. So think about this. We're going to go down a little bit. <laughs> Charles like, he's an idiot, right? Sorry. That's why we say sometimes. All right, it says, Jesus said to them, Children, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. Well, they didn't catch anything. What do you think, right? And that would be me. I would be the one that wouldn't catch anything. So then he says unto them, Cast the net to the right side of the ship, and y'all shall find, and, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved is, is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard, Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girthed his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. All right, he, he denied Christ, and Christ showed himself to him after that. You've got to realize, too, Peter went to the tomb when Christ wasn't there. So there's a little bit of faith. So we see here that when they said that it was Christ, he said there, didn't have anything known, not sure exactly why all the way, but he, he grabbed his coat, went and got in the water. Now, I'm going to throw this, this is me. I'm sitting here thinking, he knows about his past, what he's done with Christ, denying Christ, right? Sometimes, how many believe baptism? Get baptized, you die to sin, you come up when you're new, Right? I think some way I'm hoping and praying, and I don't know. I'll ask him to get to heaven. I'll do some more research and look at. But I'm going to look at this as, what if this was his way of saying, you know what? I'm so dirty, man. I just need to be clean. And he just goes and jumps in the water. We see that in, 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 in 18, we see that he spoke with words. He spoke by denying Christ. Here where he's speaking by his action. One, he's going fishing. Sometimes when things happen, we just go and we get deeper, but we go on, but we just need to go fish and get away. Christ said, that's fine. You get away. You think a little bit about it. You... Again, he's with other disciples, so there's a little bit of strength in numbers, right? And they may be saying, it's all right, Peter. It's okay. This, that, and the other. We, do, we don't exactly know. There's other stuff that's going on in between that, but we, we're just talking about this right here for us. And so, so we see that all this stuff is going on. And then he's, they know that it's Christ there, and then he goes, puts on the thing, and runs and jumps in the water. I keep, it, it's just killing me. But it jumps in the water. Now I know some because, you know what? I'll be honest, sometimes I just think we just not worried. 
I don't think in my life sometimes I'm well worthy to be standing in front of people sharing the gospel. But he lets me. That's the reason I have to look at myself and say, you know, how does God see me instead of how I see me? Yeah, I have messed up in the past. You know what? I can't change any, any of them. What I did yesterday, I cannot take back. But what's so good is, you know what? When we're out and we have caught nothing and we're struggling, and yeah, we may as well, we may have lost everything, you know, you know <coughs> we, we may not have, have anything left on except what we have is our, you know, the, the, the little, little sheep thing we have. And we just have to go and just jump in the water and hide. But guess what he's still doing? He's still standing on the bank. He's coming to where we are. Amen. You know, if you have anything, no, I don't have anything. That's okay. Just come to shore. Just come on. Just, just, just let your de- net down right here. Just let your net down right here. And that's what some of you are here to, for today. Guess what? We messed up this whole time up until today. He's saying, I need you to just let your net back down right here. This is the day for you to let down your net. Why? Because he's he come to where you are. He's come to where we are today. Now, let's go down. It says, and the other disciples came into the ship, and there, there were not found from land, not far from land, but as it were, 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they would would come to land, they saw a fire of coals, a fish laid thereon and bread. So Christ is standing on the, on the bank, he goes down on the shore, and they come in, they didn't catch nothing all night, and they come to shore and they look, he's got a fire and a fish. But man, you know, why does he have a fish? They fished all night, and he has a fish. He can do what he needs. You know, he's God. He can, he can have all these things. He has that right there. <clears throat> he said to them, bring the fish which ye have now caught. Which ye have now caught. Why? Because he said, put down your net and they let down the net. Guys, you're here today, and guess what? Yeah, this is not a fire and brimstone message. I don't think, and this might not be very in line. But it's one of those things of God is here ready for us. Say, you know, I need you to lay down your net. But guess what? See, he's a, they caught nothing, but he already had his, didn't he? He already had a fish there. He already knows how to do what he needed to do. He had everything. But guess what? Let's, just, let's do our part today. Let's let down our net again. Why? Because they did it in Luke chapter 5. The same exact scene. Let's have it again. After. There's, there's something about that. So, so what happens? Verse 15 through 19. I'm not going to have time to read all that. But this is what he does. He takes, he takes Peter. And he talks to Peter. You know what does he tell him? Feed my <coughs> sheep. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yeah, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Folks, if we are a loving church, then we need to feed the sheep. Amen. We can't stay where we are and go with God anymore. <coughs> Guess what? The ones who, who are here and the ones that are hurting, we have to feed and help them the way that we can. We have to help mold them and to let them become. Yes, guess what? They might not make all the perfect decisions in our life, right? But we have to be there to help and to support and to get them back on track. Feed the sheep. We can't just stay. But guys, we got to do our part. We have to do our part. So what? He said, this is what you have to do. Feed my sheep. Now look at Acts chapter 2. And then we're going to close with this. I didn't say now. We'll close with it. This is In Acts chapter 2, now we see that, and still we're going to talk about Peter. Peter spoke with some, with some actions, this and the other, and he, he talked to God. Now here is the, this is the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them 
cloven tongues like a like a fire and set upon each of them. Now, now, so the disciples and everybody was there, and they were they were doing this doing this thing, and all these other if you look on down, all these different people were there, different different backgrounds, different places from different places, this and the other. But what's happening is, is they're talking, but they're hearing in their own language. They're hearing it in their own tongue, in what they're used to doing, right? Now this is what this is where I want to go. Verse 14. Now verse 13 it says, others mocking, these men are full of new wine. So these, these men are saying, you know what? They're, these men gotta be drunk. These people are full of this new wine because it's just crazy talk. But this is what verse 14 it says this. But Peter standing with Standing up with the eleven, lifted his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. He went, he spoke with denial, then he spoke with some actions of going fishing, and then 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 then, then he goes and he jumps in the water, but now he's speaking with some preaching. It's a long way from denial, isn't it? Yes. When you can come and you can stand before somebody, and you can just do that because of what he's done, he come to you after we've denied him that much. He still loves us. I'm gonna keep coming. I'm gonna keep sending people that you're with. Now this is what it says in verse 15. It says, "For for these are not drunken. These are not. These men are not drunk, as you suppose, seeing it. But the third hour of the day, it's early in the morning." So he's sitting there and saying, look, these men are not drunk. So why did these men hear in their own word? See, it goes back to, to me, and I've said it here before. When I preached at it at a place one time, I got done speaking, and there was a lot of people when I was leaving, right? And one gentleman come to me and said, <laughs> asked me, said, where did you learn to speak Spanish? I said, what? He said, where did you learn to speak Spanish? I, I don't know Spanish. Oh, well, it's good. <laughs> I, I was like, well, I, saw, I was going crazy. I was like, okay. Apparently, I said something wrong or something. I didn't know. I, I didn't get it. It took me forever to figure out. But I believe if God needs to get something, if it'll take Spanish, I believe God. I believe God is that powerful to where He can let me hear something, whatever I need in my language that I need at that moment. You know, I believe God can do these things. Now, I'm not saying that I spoke, I didn't speak no Spanish. I can probably speak English if you talk to some people that, that hangs around me a lot, you know. Because, but I, I do the best that I can. But, but I think about this because, guess what? Yes, they were, they, were, they were talked to in their own language, in their own tongues. But guess what? I don't speak Spanish, I don't do anything. Because I, you know how I can know? Because I went to some other place and I was helping the witness. Somebody pulled me over there and they wanted me to talk to this guy. Guess what? He spoke in Spanish. I did not know Spanish. And I spoke my English to him, and guess what? He didn't get it. I mean, a little, and guess what? He was speaking to me. I didn't get it. So one thing I can do now is when I go do witnessing, this and that and the other, when I run into Spanish people, I have Spanish tracts, and I have Spanish books that they can read. Now, I can learn Spanish. Can I not? There, there's all kinds of things. But I believe that here we see that these men heard, these people heard in their own language, and now Peter's standing up there, guess what? This is probably Peter's biggest thing that he could do, is to stand up and say, you know what? These men are not drunk. No way. These men are not drunk. So what does he do? He starts speaking. And then in verse 21, he says this. It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And guess what? That is the biggest worst verse right there for me in this part right here. That guess what? He's sitting there saying, you know what? I have denied him. Yes, I had messed up. Yes, I had to jump into the water because I didn't have nothing on again. And he had to throw it, whatever it may be. But guess what? He jumped in the water, he did what he had to do, went on shore, and now look at him after. <clears throat> guess what? He got it. God came and he changed his life. And guess what? He got it. He, he did not run from this. He did not. He stood up with them and said, this this is what can happen, guys. This is what can go on in our lives. We don't have to keep worrying about all these things. Guess what? We can just stand firm with what we know. Guess what? I don't know everything. But I do know this. I know I am saved. I know that God has changed my life. 
We don't have to be perfect or the best of what we do. We just have to know that we're saved. we got to know that we have a relationship. On those days that we don't feel like we have one, guess what? We know we do. Amen. <laughs> That's the difference. We know we do. Yeah, when we have messed up, but we know we have a relationship. We know that He has saved us. We know that He's come to where we are. And guess what? He's still working on me. He's still working on me. And then guess what? We may go from denial and then we can go to preaching. And guess what? And I'm not talking about you have to be a preacher. Go back to 18 when he went in and the damsel saw him. Guess what? And the kinsman saw him when they cut off when he's here to earth. People are watching us. And I said he spoke with actions, right? This is one of the biggest actions that he could have had. The reason I put different things is, now, every one of my points could have been he spoke with an action. He spoke with an action. He spoke with an action of denial. He spoke with an action. Well, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to be different and mess everything up, right? And I had to get my mirror to where I had to work a little more. But the biggest action that we can be is that we act like we are child, children of God. And we become what Christ was. And we go to the hurting. We go do what we need to do. And we don't say somebody else go. When you know, when you know people had, has a thing just like Christ, he, yeah, he had his fish, right? But what's better? Come on over here. Just, just, just put your net down over here. <clears throat> That's what they do. They help build their faith. And they see what's going on. Oh, yeah, you are truly God. Because things in my life have been, I have preached before. And my life was going crazy. Things were not going right. And I preached here in this pulpit right here. And I said, my house, I feel like my, my whole house is burning down. At that moment, it was. Not literally my house, just my life. You understand what I'm saying? But what did he do? Just it back up. Yes. Just do this, Ray. Just put your <clears> net <throat> down right here. No, Ray. Put your net down right here. Hmm. Might still be rebuilding the house a little bit. But guess what? Look where I'm at. Ha <laughs> ha. Glory. And he lets me go into the jail and preach. Glory. You know, that's building my house back up. Glory. I have been in the denial. I have been in all these stages. <clears throat> and now it lets me go. Guess what? Going to the jail and preaching, there's no glory in that for people. But there's only one person that sees. God sees. Man. That's the only one that I'm worried about. He's the only one that needs to know. No, you don't, but that's okay. And I say a lot to you. Why? Because that's where I go to church. I said, I come here. That's the only reason here. That's the only reason. Because y'all know that I go, God's good. Yes, he's still building the house back. Always maintenance to do in the house, right? Always maintenance to do. Brother Zach. 